In this session, we will discuss S4 classes and methods. We are doing this because the Bioconductor project is a heavy user of the S4 system and uh, normal R or R packages available from CRAM uh, usually don't use the S4 system very much. So what is the S4 system? Well, in R you have three different ways of doing, at least three different ways of doing object-oriented programming. There's a classic system, also known as, as S3. <coughs> there's a more advanced system known as S4, and then there's a recently introduced system known as S5 or reference classes. So, what's the idea with S4? The first thing you have to bear in mind, and this is a little uh, note primarily for the programmers out there, uh, which is uh, important if you're trying doing object-oriented programming in other languages. In the S4 system, uh, S4 classes and S4 methods are two separate things. You can have a package that uses S4 classes without using S4 methods and vice versa. S4 classes is a way of representing complicated data structures. We have used this a lot already. Uh, we have seen things like expression sets and summarized expression as, and summarized experiments. And uh, we have seen the wealth of information and, and links between different data structures they, they have. And this is possible through the S4 system. So I would say that uh, S4 classes have really proven their worth in the Bioconductor project and uh, we are better off using them. So what problem are we solving with S4? Let's start by loading uh, two uh, packages. Uh, we are especially interested in getting a, a data set, <coughs> an example data set. Well, in base R, you can make any object into any kind of class. Let's make an example. Let's take a standard linear model. We have a data frame here with some y and some x values, and I'm uh, making an LM object by uh, using the LM function or the linear model function. And when I uh, print the object on the command line, I see some information, my estimates and so on, and I can do things with it. Uh, you'll also see that if you do things like uh, asking for its class, it returns LM. And uh, I can do things like names lm. Oh, sorry, names lm dot object, where I get a list of like things that doesn't immediately make a, a whole lot of sense. Now, what was this uh, I said with any object can be any class? Well, in S3, which this is an example of, a, a class is really just a list with an attribute. So let me make an arbitrary list. Let me just say this is a list with two elements. I have some uh, some letters and I have uh, some numbers. We know this, and I just uh, I just say class xx equals to lm. So look here. Now I turn this list into an, an object of class lm. But what I have here looks nothing like a linear model fit. It doesn't have these names like coefficients and residuals and fitted values. Uh, <clears throat> if, I, if I try printing it, I actually get something out, not very useful, but at least it doesn't throw an error. Uh, but I was able to turn this list into a class of object LM without any kind of error message or warning that I was doing something crazy. So the S4 system has a lot of validity checking built in. It means that I formally can define what a class contains, and I'm, I have a guarantee that if I have objects of that class, it actually looks like my class definition. This is really useful for complicated data structures because as a programmer, you know uh, what, you, uh, what you deliver to people and what you get from people. Uh, when, you, uh, when, when you say you have an object, you know it's an expression set, you know exactly what that means. So let's look a little bit at an expression set. So we uh, had already loaded the LL library and we uh, uh, load the LL data set into, into, uh, into memory. And uh, when we, we print it, we see it's an expression set, uh, which is the same we get out of if uh, we write class. Now we can see this particular expression set class is defined in the bio-based package. And there's a little uh, helper function in R called isS4 
uh, that tells us that this is indeed an S4 object. Now, when you have a class of uh, when you have a when you have an S4 class, the first thing you should worry about is stuff like how do I get help? And the formal way to get help on a class is uh, not by writing a uh, help on expression set, although that'll work, and I'll explain in a little bit why that'll work. But the, the, the true way of doing it is saying is, is using this construction here that seems rather uh, cumbersome. I either write class question mark expression set. You can see I now I get a help up uh, a help page up on expression set. Or I write question mark and then I have to put quotes in. I say expression set like the name of the class, das class. I have to put in quotes because of this das. This here will give me the first, the same web page. Perhaps you saw it refresh here. So this here is a description of uh, the class, what it contains, and so on and so forth. But this is how you get help on it. Now, uh, Objects of this class here, so traditional in Bioconductor, there's a couple of, 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 of like traditions or coding standards for when you make new classes. The first thing is that a class ought to start with a capital letter. The next thing is that a class is supposed to have a, something known as a constructor, and it should have the same name as a class. So that sounds a little uh, uh, computer science-y. Uh, we've actually used constructors all the time. When we do something like making a list, here I'm using the list constructor. I'm using a function called list, and it takes some arguments and it returns a list with these arguments here. So in the same way, we have a constructor for expression set, uh, which is basically the name of the class and uh, parentheses. And you can see I get something back where there's no data in, but I get an expression set back. So tradition in Bioconductor is that any class is supposed to have a constructor, and traditionally the constructor is documented in the same page as the class. This is why if I say help on expression set, I actually get to the expression set uh, help page as before, because this help page here documents both the class and the constructor. You can see over here in the help setting that uh, it's, it talks about instance creation. Of the bioconductor, you don't have a need for uh, uh, constructing these complicated classes yourself. Although we've done it a lot, we have used constructions such as I ranges and G ranges. Uh, but uh, it's rare that you uh, construct, say, an expression set from scratch. The classic way of, of, of defining an expression set is using a function called new, and you say new colon expression set. This here also gives us an expression set with no data in. This construction here with new is something that uh, was recommended say 10 years ago in the Bioconductor project and we have since gone away from that recommendation. So if you read old um, uh, if you read old uh, documentation you'll see this new function uh, all over the place and we now frown upon it and uh, new packages is not really supposed to have the user use this function. We have seen one example uh, when you um, uh, want to run and apply over a BS genome object, you use something called a BS apply and you use an object called BS params, uh, which at least at the time of uh, recording these videos here, didn't have a uh, constructor function. Okay, so this was constructing a class and getting help on it. So how do we see the definition of the class? Well, the definition of the class you can see with get class. Notice how we are using a camel case. We are using uh, words. Uh, we have two words here. It starts with a lower case and then we have an upper case. We don't use get dot class. We use get class in one part with a capital C. This is very common for us for that we use this camel case thing. So here we have the definition of a uh, of the class we can see that there's something here called uh, slots uh, there's two main things that are getting printed out here we get printed out some slots here some slots have some names we recognize from ex from uh, expression set 
<coughs> experiment data, pheno data, and so on. And each of these slots have a class, like experiment data has class Miami, lowercase assay data has a class called uppercase assay data, and a pheno data slot has a, has a class called annotated data frame. At the bottom here, we see that the class extends ESET and version biobase and version. Uh, version biobase and version is not something that, as a user, you think too much about, but the first line here tells us that this class here is also something that is known as an ESET. We'll discuss that in a little bit. Let's start with the slots. The slots is where the data usually is. And uh, you access a slot by using the ampersand, not the ampersand, the uh, at sign, or you use the slot function. So you can, for example, write ALL at annotation, and you get out this little character string in. We can see up here, if I scroll a little bit to the right, that, oh, that was interesting. It doesn't print it very well. Uh, let's, let's see, here. get class. Expression set. Hmm. Options with equal to. Okay, now we have, we're using a little bit less space, but uh, we have annotation here and it's a character. So uh, I showed uh, uh, ALL and annotation. I could also use slot ALL, comma annotation as a character string here. That gives me the same thing. Now, as an end user, you're not really supposed to think about slots. You're not really supposed to access data in an S4 class using the at sign. You're supposed to use something called an accessor function. And in this case here, the accessor function for this slot here is called annotation. <laughs> and you get basically uh, the same result out. Now, why is this important? It's important because some of the slots we have in here are not really supposed to be accessed by users. Uh, whereas these accessor functions are kind of supported by uh, the people who wrote the packets. So the people who wrote the packets don't really want you to access uh, the slots directly, but they want you to go through these accessor functions. We see that there's often accessor functions that are... Um, uh, that are called uh, the same as the slot. We have seen pheno data, but if you look at the input here, you see that there's not a slot. There's not a, a slot called p data, which we used a lot. But we have used feature data. We have used annotation, protocol data, and experiment data, uh, and they have all have accessor functions that are that are that are named like this. Traditionally, accessor functions are uh, documented in the help page for the class. So. Uh, Let's get that up. Um, let's make it a little bit bigger. Uh, and say uh, down here under slots, there's a little bit of description. And then here under methods, uh, there is a list of like uh, feature names, pheno data, var labels. We've seen some of them. P data have we been used, PubMeds. And some of these are accessor functions and some are not. Uh, Sometimes an accessor function is named. Some people use a, a naming convention where it's like get something. So I have a package, for example, dealing with methylation data. The way you get the methylation data is you write get meth, not meth. That's a style uh, opinion, and different packages use different conventions. Um, now, sometimes uh, classes are getting updated. In, uh, in, in, in Bioconductor. You go from one version of Bioconductor to another version and you decide as a programmer to change the class representation. And for a user, it means when you save an object and uh, you come back, you load it like a year later because you're revising your paper. Hopefully that doesn't go, it doesn't take a year, but, but often you go back and you load old objects and sometimes, it doesn't happen very often, but sometimes you run into problems because the class definition have change. The way you deal with that is that there's a function called update object in Bioconductor. And if you have an old object you have uh, loaded, you basically say update object, old object, and you tend to off, you can call it new object. 
or in many cases you don't really want the old object around anymore because uh, it has been updated you basically uh, override it uh, with this construction here now for update object to work the guy who is or the person uh, who is uh, responsible for the class definition is supposed to write an update object function that works this is not guaranteed to work but it's supposed to work and if you ever are in a situation where a class definition has been updated and it doesn't work with the update object function, you should complain loudly in the support forum. Finally, uh, if you're ever in doubt, you have an object, you're a little bit in doubt as to whether it satisfied the class definition, uh, perhaps uh, you have done uh, crazy things to it. Uh, there is a nice function that is worth knowing about called valid object which makes sure, which, which basically uh, performs a number of checks uh, on a given object and checks whether it is a, uh, a, 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 a valid uh, version of the class. This seems a little counterintuitive that why is this not uh, being run all the time? And the answer to that is it sometimes takes a long time to run valid object for really big objects. So, uh, yeah, basically, we don't run, that, that function doesn't get run by R all the time. So it is possible to create invalid objects if you are really doing uh, crazy things. That typically happens when you start playing with uh, the ampersand and you assign things to slots directly. This was S4 classes. In the next session, we are going to uh, cover S4 methods.